Module 11, Protecting Macros and Spreadsheets. So far, all the work we've done has revolved around producing a macro that works. However, there are no guarantees the macros would work in the future because users could make a variety of changes which would break the macros we've created. This module attempts to stop those situations arising. It also overcomes another problem with macros, which is that you can't undo the changes they perform. So in front of us we have the world's simplest macro, very simply range third num equals range first num plus range second num. What could possibly go wrong with this? Firstly, let's change first num to 3, and we see the solution has changed to 5. If we wanted to undo that, we would struggle. If you go to the edit menu, you can see that you can't undo the change. If a user didn't know the macro was there, they might be caught out by the fact that they cannot retrieve their previous data. Therefore, it is useful to install a message which tells the user what's about to happen. The way to create a message is very simply to use the notation message box and then write the message between parentheses. So in this case, the message could be something like the total will be recalculated. Note that you cannot undo this action. Do you wish to proceed? Note that we should also be disabling events because this is a worksheet change event. We can see the effects of a standard message box if we make changes to a first number. The message comes up and we simply click through to proceed. If we want to give the user the option of withdrawing, we can put a second option in here after a comma, which says what type of options we want a user to get. In this case, we want a simple yes, no answer. Now the message box will have a value, which we will call response. If the user clicks yes, the response will be six. If no, then seven. A simple way of seeing what values different responses draw is to press F1 in message box. This brings up Visual Basic Help. It can also be accessed from the Help menu. This can always be useful when using unfamiliar functions. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that an answer yes gives a value of 6 and an answer no gives a value of 7. So we only want our macro to proceed if the value is equal to 6. A simple if statement produces that result. Returning to the sheet, if we now type 5, we can say no, we don't wish to proceed. Unfortunately, the sum is now long, so we need a way of undoing the previous action if the user does not wish to proceed. So we can introduce an else statement, and the notation here is very simply application.undo. Effectively, Excel does what it would do anyway if you selected undo from the edit menu. Now we can proceed on a calculation, but should we choose not to proceed, the value is reset to its previous value. There is another common problem that you might encounter, particularly with numeric macros, which arises if somebody writes a word instead of a number. I do wish to proceed with a calculation, but I'm going to get an error because 4 plus test doesn't have a solution. Therefore, in the first instance, we want to test if first num and second num are both numbers. The notation for this is if VBA is numeric, and then the cell in question, and we can do this for both cells. If both cells are numeric, then proceed. Else, we want the change to be undone, and the user shown a message saying all inputs must be numeric. Again, we can use application on do. So if we put 3 in, we can proceed. If we put a letter in, we get a very simple message telling us that can't be done. Of course, it might be vitally important to us that users cannot change any of the sheet except the two input cells. We can define the changed cell as follows and then say if cells tar grow tar col is not equal to range first num or cells tar grow tar col is not equal to range second num then undo changes and exit the subroutine remember to put the label at the end of the code now if I attempt to put a number in cell C5 
the macro automatically deletes it. In effect, the user is prevented from making any potentially damaging changes. That would, of course, include changing the total cell. If we look at the code we've written, we can see we've written application.undo in three different places. Now, the golden rule with writing undo statements in Excel code is that you can only undo changes that occurred to the sheet before the macro has made any changes itself. To demonstrate this, I'm going to make cell A1 equal to 1 when we make an unauthorized change to the sheet. So, say we put a 3 in cell C5. We now get an error message. The 1 has appeared in cell A1, but Excel does not know which action to undo, as it does not remember the actions taken by Visual Basic Code. Another good way to protect sheets is to stop changes to multiple cells being accepted. So if target.count, that's the number of cells which have changed, is greater than 1, then undo the change and go straight to exit sub. Let's try deleting the two header rows in rows 1 and 2. It immediately gets undone by Excel. Of course, there is one more way to protect a sheet in Excel, and that's not to use Visual Basic at all. If you go Tools Protection, Protect Sheet, and accept the default values, users will now be unable to make changes to cells such as C3. I'm now going to unprotect the sheet and make it so we can change the cells we select. If you right-click, go Format Cells, Protection, and uncheck the locked box, then a cell will no longer be protected. So we want all cells to be protected except two. This time we protect the sheet, we're going to record a macro to do so. So tools, protection, protect sheet, done. It's also worth unprotecting the sheet whilst the macro is being recorded. The code for this appears pretty simple. We should try and remove all the code after the word protect and see if that works. Now we're being asked to unprotect the sheet. So we've obviously managed to protect the sheet adequately just using active sheet dot protect. Note that is the active sheet, and were we to want to use it, we'd have to refer to sheet calc. So let's start our macro by unprotecting the sheet, and end our macro by protecting it again. I've discovered our earlier if statement isn't quite working up to scratch. If you click through, you can see we've changed range first num, but it still wants to undo the change. That's because cells targ row targcol is not equal to second num. Therefore, we would be best served by using an else statement, asking instead if the cell has changed and is equal to either first num or second num. Now, if we rerun the if statement, we no longer undo. The sheet is now protected, and as the sheet is protected, we can actually take away a lot of our protective code. If we try and delete the top two rows, we aren't even given the option. Note if you have a protected sheet and you want to make changes to cells that have been protected, so in this case range third num in G3 has been protected, then you will always have to unprotect the sheet. If you don't, the following happens. You get a very simple error message saying the cell you are trying to change is protected. Excel is best at protecting whole sheets, but if there are certain columns or rows you want to protect, it is better to use application.undo statements.